This is a new unit. It's called solids, and this is the first lesson within it. Solids number one is called volume. And there's sort of a side note to the title versus area and length. What's the difference between length, area, and volume, and how are the units different? So let's map this out a little bit, and I'm going to try to go across here. Let's see if I can get this right. Let's start with length. Spell that right. Area and volume. All right, let's start with units first. So here are some units of length. First, the generic, units to the one power. We almost never show anything to the one power. It's invisible, it's hidden. In fact, every number or variable has the three invisible ones. What are they? Let's say it's an x. There's a power one, which we leave invisible. We don't show it, it's there. There's a one times it out front, and there's a divided by one over in the denominator position, right? So three invisible ones. So when we show a unit, we won't show the one, but I'm gonna show it here because I wanna contrast it to the units of area and volume. So here are some typical units of length. Miles, inches, meters. Miles, inches, meters. Length, right? Let's go to area. Area has units to the second power. Units to the second power might include inches squared, meters squared, and an interesting one, acres. Acres already has the square in it. It's only a measure of area. It's not a measure of length or of volume. So it's a specialty unit. And I drop it in there for fun because you're like, where's the square? It's built in. It's already got that inside the definition of acres. Okay, so an interesting one. Volume. What are the units of volume? Generically, units to what power? Three. Okay, so here are some examples. You might see um, interesting. You might say inches cubed, meters cubed, so inches cubed, uh, cubed being to the power three, square being to the power two. Square is like uh, finding the area of a square, that's why they call it that. Cube being a cubed, I'll draw it in a minute. Um, inches cubed, meters cubed, and a fun one, just like acres, Space. Space is three-dimensional. Space has three dimensions, so we call it space, right? The name for it. It's built in. You don't need a cube on it. It's understood with the word. You can't use space for area. You can't use space for length. It only gets used for volume. All right, what are we talking about here? What's length? Length is this shape. What shape is this? A line, that's length. And line and length sound a lot alike, right? They go together hand in hand. From point to point, a distance. From point to point, a distance. So when I'm talking about length, I may say, how far is it from me to you? That's a distance. Right? Notice the dimensions. It's one dimensional, right? There's no other dimensions involved in how far apart are we. That's a length. Fair enough? Okay, go for area. Area looks something like this. That's a rectangle, at least I'm trying to draw one. And you'll see dimensions, not just a distance between us, but now you'll see a length and a width. 
So, a dimension in this direction, if you sort of extended it, could be the x-axis. And a dimension in this direction could be the y-axis. Two-dimensional, right? X and y, the two that make up what, what we normally do, horizontal and vertical. By the way, there's many different names for length and width. You could call this horizontal. You could call width vertical. So you can call these two dimensions many different names, but they're the same dimension, that x and y, all the time. Let's look at volume. Volume is a shape like this. And I said I was going to draw a cube, but I'm not. I'm going to draw a prism. All right, can you see the three dimensions? Can you see depth? When you look at it, is this face closer to you or the one behind it closer to you? Is this face over here sorted to the left, is that face closer to you? Or is this one back here? Is that one closer to you? Depends how I look at what right there. <laughs> Sorry. In fact, it's a trick on your eyes, right? Isn't this board flat? There's no depth to the board. So the depth you're seeing is a trick on your eyes. Fair enough? That's why it's going back and forth for some of you. Some of you are saying, I see them switch now. Now I look at that back one, now it's in front. Now I look at the front one, now it's in front, right? You can keep switching. Okay, now we can fix it. We can help trick your eye better if we did this. What does the dashed mean? behind it. Good, yeah. The, in drafting or when you're drawing, we call it a hidden line, right? It's hidden because it's behind the shape. Now which one's in front? This one here, this face is as closer to you, right? And I didn't do a very good draw, job drawing this. Look, my dimension lines aren't very consistent here. Anyway, I told you I was gonna draw, why is this a cube? Because the three dimensions ends up, just draw it in a square format. Maybe I can draw the cube a little bit better. That's why the three dimensions, one, two, three, which we're gonna talk about now. So in the notes, we call this length, width, and height. Length, width is in here, and H-E-I-G-H-T, height, is here. Notice that the three dimensions line up back with the X and Y format. If we continued in this direction, it would be the X. If we continued vertical, it would be the Y. And in the Cartesian coordinate system, the one that comes out at you, we call Z. That's the third dimension, that distance between us, right? So horizontal might be called here. Horizontal might be the generic, horizontal. Vertical here. And this might be called depth. Instead of width, we might call it depth. Right. Okay. So the th the difference between the three. Length is to the power one. Area is to the power two. Volume is to the power three. An acre. An acre is an area of land equal to forty three thousand five hundred and sixty square feet. So even though we use the word acre for an area, it has a definition based on square feet. So it goes back to area. Let's see. Face. A face is one of the flat surfaces of a three-dimensional shape. So do you see there's a face here that's closest to us? Do you see there's a face behind it that's facing backwards? Do you also see there's a top to it, which is a face would be facing upward? There's a face underneath there that, that's down. If you were to look under it, you would see that face. There's a face on the side here, right? If you were to look around this side, you could see it. And a face here, which we can see because it's turned slightly where we can see the shape. So on a three-dimensional prism like this, this being called a rectangular prism, there's six faces. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Dimensions are, let's see. There are three dimensions, length, width, height, x, y, z. Good, we've covered that. Length is left to right or horizontal. So another generic name, right, instead of horizontal, 
We could have called this left to right. We could have called this up and up, up to down or up and down maybe, up and down. And what's another generic name for death? One more thing in the notes is a sphere. It's a little bit off topic. What's a sphere? It's a 3D circle. Okay, like a ball. A ball is a sphere. And you said 3D circle. That too I like. And when we draw them, I draw a circle. I draw like a belt. And then a hidden belt. And I guess sometimes a center in there. I don't like the center. That made it look bad. Well, it looks pretty bad, but <laughs> can you tell it's a sphere? That's how I draw spheres. And then I have this whole thing. It's good we wear masks now because if you say sphere right, I always feel like I'm about to, like, yeah, yeah, as I say it. So, okay, I'm afraid to say that because it might come true. So good thing I'm wearing a mask. Okay, sphere. So let's go back through length, area, and width. Here's what I want you to equate it to. I want you to equate it to 1D. What's the D stand for? Do you know where I'm headed yet? If length is just between us, right? What's the D stand for? 1D. Dimension. Dimension. Okay, one dimension, 1D. So when you get to area, how many Ds? Good. 2D. Like this board. This board is a flat surface. There's a horizontal axis and there's a vertical, but it's all flat in the board. 2D. And then we're tricking ourselves by drawing it that way. But what's the volume? 3D. 3D. And that's the way to remember 3D and volume is when you go to a 3D movie and maybe you wear those glasses, right? The cardboard glasses. What does the movie, what does a 3D movie do that a 2D movie doesn't do? It pops out at you. That's the third dimension we're talking about. That's where you now move from area to volume. There's now a volume you can measure if, if you could fill up that space this way, that way, and this thing coming at you. That's these three dimensions now, X, Y, and the Z, the depth, coming at you, right? So that's the easiest way to remember it. Now, the cool thing is that physicists speculate there's a lot more dimensions. There's a 40. What's 40? Time. 4D time. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> physics concept. But, and, and I'm not going to get this totally right, but I like the idea behind it. So let me try to present it my way. Physicists speculate that there's an infinite amount of dimensions. We just can't see and experience them as humans. Go like that. Everybody repeat after me. <laughs> right and, and imagine this um, look let's think of it this way let's say i was a being that could only see in one dimension look at my world look how boring just this that's all there is that's all i see now i'm a being that can see in two dimensions look how much things have changed for me i can see this kind of thing now right and then look at the change between three, uh, two and three, going from here to here. Now you're into our world where we can see depth too. Look at all that you see around you. That's a 3D concept. Now we add time into it. And now imagine if you would a creature, say you're a creature that can see 20D. What could you see and experience that we in this room can't? You with me? But there's a <laughs> But the concept is fascinating, right? And I'm always the one to tell you that the physical world is full of limitations. For example, go back to our line. Tell me three things about the line 
that don't work in the real world. Tell me about a line. A line is, in geometry, there's two of them. So I'm going to say perfectly straight instead of flat. So a line in geometry is perfectly straight. Is there any such thing in our real world that's perfectly straight? No. So we know there's things in your mind that you can experience that you cannot experience in the real world. Are you with me? You start changing as you get older. We're done with the real world, and now you're starting to think theoretically. You're starting to think about things we can't reproduce physically. Okay, what's another one? The line is um, perfectly straight, uh, infinitely thin. What's infinitely thin? You can see it in your mind, though. Can't you see a really thin line going, there's no, it's infinitely thin? Mm -hmm. And then the concept of going in both directions forever. Is there anything that goes in both directions forever? Not in our physical world, but it's in your mind, so it must exist. Are you with me? It has to. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to conceive it. So now you're into a whole new world, right? I think you should keep the 20D in your mind. Just imagining what's out there that you can conceive potentially in your mind, not in the physical world. And at some point you have to move beyond, you know, counting. Remember math started out with just physical, right? If, if I had to do two plus three, I would just take two plus three and I could go one, two, three, four, five, done. It's physical, I can count it. Now all of a sudden you've already moved into a world of math and other things, physics, et cetera, whatever it could be. It doesn't exist in the real world. It only exists in your mind. It's theoretical. And now you get into a more powerful state of being. I don't know. Don't ask me. I just worked here, right? Okay. So there you go. That's your first uh, lesson in a unit on volume. And that is contrasting or comparing length, area, and volume.